I'm Linda Fontolberg for Biz News. The agricultural sector in South Africa could soon use nuclear energy. A strategic partnership has been signed between the Southern African Agri Initiative, known as SAI, and C5 Capital, a venture capital firm in Washington. And we have Frantra, the CEO of SAI, in the studio to tell us all about us. Hi, um, Frantra, how are you? Hi, Linda. Fine, thanks. And yourself? Um, so... This is a very interesting initiative. Why is the agricultural sector thinking of nuclear energy as a solution? Well, Linda, in South Africa, uh, we have about 800,000 people that are employed by the agricultural sector and we contribute about 2.5% of GDP. And, um, you know, in South Africa, we hold this firm belief or styled this firm belief that uh, agriculture is built on two crucial pillars. So they are profitability and sustainability. Our farmers rank among the best in the world because we are able to provide a preferred product at a preferred price uh, to the world's markets, you know, like Asia, Europe uh, and the Americas. But we are not able to farm profitably and sustainably if we if we cannot deliver a product at a great price or at a competitive price, then we won't be able to compete with our with with other farmers in the world. So electricity plays a huge role in this, whether you're doing irrigation or whether you're a chicken farmer or if you, even if you look at the cold chains, um, electricity plays a huge role. And when you do not have electricity or when electricity is taken away from you um, and it's, it's unpredictable and you don't know how long it's going to last, uh, it has a huge impact. In fact, uh, recent surveys showed that about 56% of farmers had a loss of income because of uh, the blackouts in South Africa. Uh, They showed that 75% of farmers had to adapt their farming practices severely to to compensate for for, for this uh, blackouts that we do have. But I think, you know, um, uh, for us, the the most worrying thing is just farmers that that had to give up because it was just not profitable to farm anymore. And as an organization that looks after the rights and interests of family farmers, we had to look elsewhere. We had to look uh, to a long-term solution and a sustainable solution, especially with the world changing to to net zero outcomes and um, you know all, all of all of this talk of uh, more carbon sequestration, carbon credits. So nuclear was was a great option uh, when when we were asked by by C five Capital to work with them on this project. Um, can we just before we go into the exact details of the deal, um, why would wind and solar? You know, I'm thinking of this, you know, farm or wind pumper. Why would that not be a solution for South Africa? No, um, I think solar is, is uh, South Africa is one of the countries that, that uses the most solar because the private sector has, has totally embraced it and, and wind as well. Um, I just think, you know, uh, we, we need to broaden our horizons technologically, but also um, I think, you know, uh, nuclear is more sustainable and, and there's, there's no off times, you know. Uh, the, the sun won't not shine a couple of days or the wind won't, will not, not blow, you know. Um, you can have uh, ongoing operations for years at a time and, and the scalability of nuclear is also very, very attractive. And obviously, you know, um, it's, it's cost effective. They would not have designed this, uh, the engineers told me, if, if, they were, or if it wasn't a cost effective route. And um, how did this partnership come about? Well, we were approached by C5 Capital um, uh, while we were we were in talks for for more than a year on other projects, but especially um, with regards to this partnership. You know, I think um, this partnership between advanced nuclear and organised agriculture in the form of SAI is the first of its kind in Africa. Um, not only does this project. Uh, uh, look to provide clean and sustainable energy direct to consumers, but we will also be establishing a uh, energy innovation accelerator because I know most people think you know that nuclear is just about providing uh, clean and sustainable energy for farmers, but uh, you know there are other groundbreaking approaches that combine nuclear science and agriculture. For example, you know scientists are using techniques like uh, SIT which is the sterile uh, insect technology, uh, stable isotopes and uh, near-infrared spectroscopy to tackle challenges in the pest control, animal health, fighting antimicrobial resistance, assisting with uh, gene selection, sustainable animal production and the like. So I think it's, it's more than just energy, but for, for, for C5, the mandate was very, very clear. 
we need to find a way to provide clean and sustainable energy to, to end users. And, and farming is great because you, you don't have to use existing infrastructure. And especially if you're looking to scale to the rest of Africa, we can really unlock agriculture's potential in Africa uh, if we are able to put down plants like this where there are no um, uh, existing infrastructure. And, and, and I think that is also the theme for Africa when it comes to technology. We have, a, we have had this tendency to, to leapfrog technologies. And I think with nuclear, we can absolutely do that. And if we look at um, feeding 2 billion more people by 2030, we will have to come up with initiatives like this. So for us, um, this, this is how, this, this, these were the kind of discussions that we had that led to this uh, cooperation. And um, I'm just kind of physically trying to look at it because our nuclear reactors are normally really big. So th this is pebble bed technology. So for a typical farm, what are you envisaging? Yeah, so um, it's modular pebble bed nuclear technology. So modular, it's movable, and um, and and you know uh, we can. It's not as big as, as what we all are used to. You know, usually we have the visions of Three Mile Island and Fukushima or Chernobyl because the danger is always very real. Um, with this type of technology, um, you know, the other technologies didn't become better and nuclear stayed behind. Everybody was still working on nuclear. So it's it's become extremely, extremely safe um, using the laws of physics to ensure that uh, an, an, uh, an accident like those others that I just mentioned don't happen again. So this would typically look like nothing bigger than a football field located on a farm. Um, a single three-story building is probably the biggest uh, type of building that will be erected um, with uh, minimal buildings. We actually, we, we struggled to explain this to 3D designers when we were trying to do mock-ups and I think AI came closest. So yes, um, I think the most important thing is it's, it doesn't use any water for cooling. It uses fans and helium gas, which helps a lot. Um, and yes, we're looking um, to, you know, supply power to, uh, if, it, it depends on what the operation would be, but in peak times to about 1,400 homes uh, with one of these reactors. And what time scale are you looking at? You know, so when are, do you think, it, yeah. Yeah, so we are currently in the funding phase then, and that's the job that C5 Capital are doing. They are raising the funding. Um, and after the funding is, is completed, we are looking at a time frame of about five years. So the first unit could stand on a farm by five years? Yes, yes. You see, the technology is already developed and uh, all, all the people working on it, and because it's a proudly South African technology are well, uh, as well already here, uh, we've got a very pro-nuclear government, a very good nuclear regulator. So we don't see that as being obstacles. So um, I think, you know, if the funding is in place, we could look at about five years, yes. Now talk about the funding. What would a typical unit cost? Yeah, so uh, there's been there's been a range of of, of numbers thrown out, uh, but the ones that I heard speaking to uh, the the engineers are about nine billion rands um, that they are looking to, and and because this is modular, you can add to it. So you can put one down and then add to add another one and add another one. Um, so that that is that is the starting block that that they are looking at. So how would it be funded? I mean, a typical farmer, you know, you, you know, the margins are small. Yeah, I think I think for the first pilot project, um, it would be a lot, but it would be a good investment over a long term. And I think, you know, it's first going to be um, companies that probably get involved or, you know, maybe a group of farmers or a community um, to, to ensure sustainable um, energy production over a longer period. I think, you know, that could take away a lot of headaches. And especially in a country such as ours with such good farmers and, and such good export um, opportunities, uh, that could be a good investment. But again, this is, this is a, a question of economies of scale. As soon as we start building the first one, everything else we will become a lot cheaper because we will set up the production facilities, etc. cetera. Um, and, and I think, you know, from there, it will only get cheaper as we go on. You mentioned all the South Africans involved. I've noted when you announced it, it was just a bank of South Africans. And in this technology, there seems to be a lot of South Africans involved as well. Yeah, I think it's something that I'm the most proud of is to have um, fellow South Africans uh, speaking to them. And, you know, they are the guys that pioneered this technology 30 years ago. And most of them spread throughout the world, um, especially to, to America and, and to, to Australia and to other countries to assist with their projects, France. 
um, and now they are looking to come home to to, to build uh, this first of its kind type of reactor here in South Africa. So when you speak to farmers and you say we're going nuclear, was Mark a nuclear plan? What are they saying? <laughs> Yeah, look, uh, first of all, um, I haven't heard any negative comments from farmers. I think farmers are so so sick of these blackouts, you know, hampering production. Um, I mean, if, if last year alone, you know, our um, poultry industry was the hardest hit with about 10 million chickens being culled due to the inability to maintain heating and cooling and feeding. And, you know, it, it causes significant financial losses. You know, power cuts uh, disrupt the coal chain for perishable goods, causing them to lose freshness and be rejected by retailers, causing uh, delivery delays, you know, uh, financial losses for farmers and exporters and reputational damages in export markets. And again, then that leaving, that, that um, leads to inflated food prices. So it, 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 it goes over to the consumer paying more. So I, I think farmers are kind of fed up with the situation and that's why um, most of them have started looking at, at solar. But each time we mention nuclear, they, you know, they say you can't do it soon enough. So uh, I, I, I do think we have a responsibility to do some consumer education, if you want to call it that, regarding the risks, because like, like I said before, there, a lot has been done in the industry to mitigate those risks. And I really don't think that's even something that, that we have to worry about. Um, but yeah, it's with any with any new pioneering work, uh, they they will be some some hesitation. So so um, are you worried about the fact that this technology is not totally proven yet? Are they still working on it? No, no, I'm not worried about that. I know there are other countries, uh, other similar technologies like this. You know, in China and and and, and France is busy with um, some older. Uh, type in America, they are busy with it. But um, yeah, the technology is proven. Um, I think, you know, uh, what these guys have done over the past 30 years, they have been working on it in some some form or another. So no, I'm not worried about that at all. You mentioned that farming is not normally seen as you know a, a place where technology develops, although you've mentioned all the places where it's used already. Um, so do, do you think farming should embrace more technology? Yeah, I think, you know, as farmers, we have to embrace more technology because we have to produce more um, with less on less. And the only way we are going to do that is by embracing technology um, to assist us to, to, to lower the cost of what we're doing and to lower our impact on the environment. Um, I think, you know, that, that is probably the, the most crucial thing to, to, to build a sustainable and profitable uh, farming operation is to look what drives down your costs and increases uh, your yields. And, and I, I really must say farmers have been um, very, very optimistic to embrace new technologies. Once you can show them, it improves their profitability. Francia Arisso from SAI, thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you, Linda.